Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. This time we're having fun with some 4K fire elements inside of Apple's Motion. Now, I was watching Survivor on television, and one thing that I thought was very cool in Survivor was how when you see the Survivor logo coming towards the screen and the fire's coming up, it's almost like the fire is actually illuminating the Survivor logo. I mean, it's obviously already illuminated, but as the fire is coming up and going down, you can actually see that reflected on the logo. And I thought that that was a very cool look. And I was wondering if I could recreate that look inside of Apple Motion. And I think I've done a pretty good job, as you can see in front of you. And in this lesson, I wanna show you how we're gonna do this animation very quickly and very easily. All right, now I normally say let's command or alt tab into Apple Motion, but I don't need to do that in this lesson because Motion is obviously a Mac only product. So we're going to simply command and tab into Motion 5 and let's get things set up to work. Now the first thing that I'm going to do inside of the standard group that comes by default when you create a new project inside of Motion is I'm going to add a color solid here of black. So that black is going to be our background. So let's do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the generators category, and I'm just gonna leave it on all generators because the one that I'm looking for is right here, color solid. We're gonna simply grab that, drag it and drop it. Now, of course, a couple ways that we can get at the parameters for the color solid. We can head on over to the inspector, or I'm just gonna use the heads up display because it's gonna give me that color parameter in here that we're going to choose as black. All right. So let's now bring in our fire element that I have located on the desktop. I'm just gonna say import. Now, one thing that's always important to keep in mind when working in motion is you wanna keep yourself as organized as possible because if you stick everything into one group, things can get a little bit crazy. I'm not gonna say a little quickly, very quickly, okay? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out this 4K fire element and we're just gonna put it into its own group and I'm gonna call this main fire element, okay? Now, one thing that's also important to keep in mind is that this element here, if I come to the media tab and I select the element and I show the inspector, you'll see that this fire element actually has an alpha channel with it, which I don't want to utilize in this tutorial. So I'm simply going to turn it off. Okay, now you'll see that as soon as I did that, that the transparent checkerboard in the preview up here inside of the media tab disappears and turns to a black background, which is what we would see if there was no alpha channel, okay? Now let's just jump down a little bit here to the middle here, just so that I can see this fire. Now, what's also important to keep in mind if I zoom back here and I select that layer, you can see that this is 4K inside of a 1920 by 1080 frame. Okay, so I'm gonna take this fire element and I'm gonna be using this as a mask element. So I need this to be a little bit brighter because I'm not using that alpha information. I'm gonna use luminance information instead. So let's take this fire element. I'm gonna duplicate it once. And with this version or this copy of the element, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna come down to blend mode and I'm going to choose an additive blend mode. Now I'm just gonna take this and duplicate it a whole bunch of other times to make that nice and bright. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate it one more time and I'm gonna pull it out to put it in its own group. Okay, I'm gonna call this final fire element. And what I'm gonna do with the main fire element, I should call this main fire element for mask, is right now I'm just gonna turn it off because I don't even need to see it. Let's come back to the beginning of our timeline and let's type in some text. Now what's cool about this technique is that I'm just gonna use some text. You could use a logo, a picture, any type of element that you wanna bring in this technique works exactly the same, okay? So let's take our text tool here and I'm just gonna type in appropriately enough, rampant. Okay, let's actually make sure that I can see what I'm typing in here. And how we do that, of course, is once the text is here, let's pull it out of that turned off layer into its own group. We'll call this rampant text. Now I'm gonna be having two different versions of it here. So we'll call this rampant text, I'll call this bright. And let's take this text element. I'm gonna come back to the inspector here. I wanna make sure that I have the text selected. I'm just gonna increase the size of the text and I do need to have it centered up here. A little bit bigger, I think it's pretty good. And let's pick a color for this. Let's just position it here so it's in the middle of the screen. Perfect. Again, F7 to call up the heads up display. Let's just make this color 
sort of like what we had in the intro there. Let's just make it that sort of color blue right there. And that's our bright text. I'm just gonna move the heads up display out of the way here. Let's duplicate this text. And I'm gonna call this dark. Much like we did before, I'm gonna select that text. We're just gonna take the color and we're just gonna grab the lightness and just drag it south, probably to about there. I don't want it too dark. And we wanna make sure that we position the dark text behind the bright text like that. So the bright text looks like it's the only text in our composition. Okay, now I'm ready to get in and to use our mask, use our flame elements as the mask, because what I wanna do is I wanna highlight the bright part of this ramp in here, and it's gonna then basically key that out so that I can see the dark behind it. So it's gonna look like that dark ramp is being illuminated where the fire is gonna be. Now I am going to need this fire element on the topmost layer. I'll just put it up there for now. I'm just gonna turn it off until we need it. And let's take our text bright. And with that text bright selected, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to add an image mask. Now I'm gonna be asked, what do I wanna use as the image mask? And for the image mask, I'm gonna use our main fire element for mask appropriately enough. I'm gonna drag that and drop that into the image mask. And I'm just gonna come down to about the midway point because you'll notice that nothing has happened. Well, you'll remember that I turned the alpha channel for the layer off. Now, if I didn't turn it off, because the source channel is set to alpha, I would immediately see the result, but because I don't, and remember, I said I wanted to use the Luma information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch the source channel from alpha to luminance, and we now get the exact look that we were hoping for. You can actually see the fire inside of the rampant word mark. So let's just, I'm gonna, I actually I need to bring it back to the beginning here because I wanna see it with everything. Let me just turn on my fire element here. Let's come down and you'll see that it creates a very cool look, except for the fact that what's happening is, is that because this is just being illuminated as the same fire element, just a brighter version of it passes behind it, it's actually not creating the look that we want. We're gonna need to alter this main fire element just a little bit to tweak this to get it to look the way that we want. What we're gonna do with this mask element, now what's important to keep in mind is that anything that I do to this mask element is going to be taken into consideration before it's used as a mask. So for example, if I was to, um, oh, I don't know, put a blur on it and I blurred it out, that mask then in turn will be blurred. And we're actually gonna do that right now. Let's first of all, with this element, I'm gonna to come to the properties. I'm gonna take the scale of the element and we're just gonna bump it up. Let's put it up at about, I don't know, 115. Okay. Now, as soon as I do that, you're gonna notice a slight offset in the background, and I don't mind it too much. I think 115 might be a bit too much. Let's put it at 110, okay? I could even bring this just north a little bit. You can actually see right here where the peak of the one flame is right here. That's the corresponding peak right there, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come back to the library. I'm gonna come to the filters and I'm gonna use a blur element. Now, I'm gonna use a blur element from FX Factory just because I like using their elements or you know elements I use all the time in the work that I do on a daily basis. You could just use a standard blur effect or a blur effect from a different company if you would like to. So I'm gonna head on over to FX Factory Pro. I'm just gonna grab the standard blur effect. I'm gonna drag it and drop it onto the main fire element for mask. You'll notice that things blur up ever so slightly. What I'm gonna do is just take this blur and just adjust the radius out a little bit like that. Because the whole point is I don't want too much definition in that fire. I just want it to be creating an illumination. And there we go, and now you can see that as the fire moves, it's actually illuminating the text the way that we would expect it to. And of course, at any time, what we can do is we can adjust this blur even more so they get even more illumination, like that, which would be even more realistic depending on how close the fire is to that text element. But as you can see, what we've done now is we've taken what was you know, conceivably a very standard element, a fire element that's just gonna go in front of text, and we've taken that realism and we've taken it to the next level by having the fire actually illuminate the text. Now, something else that's important to keep in mind, you might be saying, well, Kev, you know, the fire wouldn't be just illuminating it a brighter blue color, maybe it would be illuminating it, oh, I don't know, an orange color, I'll just throw that out there. Well, keep in mind that with this blue rampant that's being illuminated here, 
At any point, if I don't like that color, I can pick any color that I'd like to have it illuminated as. So for example, if orange was sort of the color that we were going for, let's just say that color right there, as soon as I select it and I close my color parameter, I can now come back and you'll see that the fire is now creating a completely different illumination type across the text, but again, giving it that extra layer of realism, which what I can do now, if we want to do a very slight move in on that rampant text mark, what I can do is I can come up and we can add a new camera to our project. We can switch it to 3D. I'm going to come to my behaviors. I'm going to come to the camera. I'm just going to choose a basic dolly behavior. And I'm not going to use the heads up display to set the dolly's parameters. I'm going to come back to the inspector. I'm just going to set this at about 200. So this way now when I come back to the beginning and I hit play, that rampant word mark is zooming in. There comes our fire to illuminate it. And we've now taken this text element to the next level by giving it the realism of having that fire actually illuminate it. And we did it very quickly and very easily with a few different layers inside of Apple's Motion. All right, now don't forget, if you want some great free 4K elements, head on over and check them out at 4kfree.com. And to check out the entire Rampant Design Tools product line, you can head on over and check them out at Rampant Design Tools dot com. <laughs>